Hi, and welcome to the Psyched Stitcher podcast. My name is Marsha. I am a knitter, a crocheter, an all-around crafter located in Mississippi State, um, originally from the Pacific Northwest. And this is kind of my little corner of the internet where I talk things all, all things crafty. Um, yeah. Welcome to episode three of the Psyched Stitcher podcast. It has been crazy um, and the kids are just now going for a nap. My husband's taking care of them and um, I thought if I don't get it in right now, it is not happening for probably a while. I am a PhD student um, at Mississippi State University and um, excuse me. I'm drinking some coca-cola so carbonation um anyway so i'm a phd student in school psychology hence the name psyched stitcher um and uh things have been pretty crazy the last couple of weeks i've been working a lot um school like the classes are ramping up and stuff like that my husband also works very long hours and so has been working about 75 hours a week and so i just thought there's like no time. There's no way I'm going to be able to record unless I do it right now. So let's get into it. Um, I follow a pretty typical um, podcast format. I'll do finished objects, flips, and then any acquisitions I may have. Um, and maybe some knitting plans if I have any. Um, and just like general life chat. So, um, so let's get into it. The first thing I have is um, a finished object and also what I'm wearing today, which is the Farnham sweater by Sophie, the Knit Pearl Girl. I love this sweater. I love it so much. Um, it's so perfect. So I finished this, uh, I think I knit it in like 21 days. I might be mistaken, but my Ravelry said something like that, so I'm going to go with it. Um, I will link my Ravelry and all of these projects are there. I am not great at putting um, a ton on them. I don't even know if I've actually, I don't actually have like finished object pictures in this yet, which I really need to before I get something on it. But um, yeah, um, I do have like my start and my end dates on there. And um, if I've done anything different, I, t I try to... Um, say what I've done but so this is a test knit it will be coming out shortly um and it has been so wonderful I knit it in a single strand of DK um this is my leftover yarn which I in my last podcast I had mentioned that I was frustrated because I thought I was gonna have I was gonna run out of yarn well little did I know how short the sleeves were gonna really wind up being and so um I did not need to buy more yarn. So I have so much more than I really need here. I didn't need any more, um, but <clears throat> so um, I made it in Haydenville DK and from Valley Yarns um, in the color sand. And then that's the main color. And then the um, contrast color is Haydenville DK in the colorway teal. So that's them and I have so much left so i'm not sure what i'm gonna do with this i might de-stash it i might use it for another little project um i have probably like enough for a small sweater for my daughter here so i can make like a, a stripy um sweater for her in the same colors if i wanted to but yeah so i've got a lot of yarn left um so specs about this yarn or about this um let's see i love Sophie's patterns. Um, this is the first pattern that I've actually knit of hers, but um, not the first one that I've bought or seen. And um, I love that she really, not only is she size inclusive, which is very important, but she also really tries to make it so that the sweater is really going to fit you the way that you want it to fit. Um, and so she allows for a lot of room for customization in the pattern, um, which I really appreciated. I have a larger bust, but I don't have as, like, I have quite a difference in my, my bust to my waist size, and, um, 
sometimes when I go off of like ease for my bust, it is so baggy. And well, sometimes I really want that, sometimes I really don't. Um, so if I had gone off the recommended ease for my bust size, which this is something that's supposed to have a large, large, large amount of bust. I think it's like 30 centimeters, 30 to 50 centimeters of positive ease. Um, it would have just been a potato sack on me. It's already very oversized as is, but um, in the pattern, she actually says for like plus size bodies that it might be better um, in like some of her talking to some of the people that she knows, um, it might be better to um, go down a uh, body size, but like knit to the right length and then like kind of keep the, um, I'm not saying this well. Basically, adjust the body size so that there's less positive ease, but keep the arm length kind of the same, the body length the same, etc. Um, so she gives affordances for that and kind of instructions on how to do that in the pattern, which I thought was fantastic. So while I should have, like for my size, I would have been knitting the size H. I actually knit size F and um, got like the perfect amount of ease. I think for me, it's so uh, oversized and baggy and I love it. I mean, there's like so much ease here, um, but it's exactly what it's supposed to be. Um, and I must have very short arms. I'm not really sure. Um, I had to shorten the arms, like I think two sleeve or two stripe smaller. Um, it could be that my, um, this grew more since it is a super wash with some acrylic in it. Um, grew more than necessarily like a different wool would. Um, and that's why I had to shorten it, but I had made it and it was way too wide. Like my, my arm was way too wide and way too long. And so I actually ripped back the arm. I only had one done and then I blocked it to see how it looked. Um, and it only been the one and it just wasn't what I liked. So I left it, did the other arm, liked it. So I went back and redid this arm and, um, yeah turned out perfectly. I've been wearing this so much. I'm actually in the test knit group. I've been saying like, I kind of want to make one with like a little less ease and maybe in more of like a summery yarn. And I'm really resisting the urge to cast that on like right now or, um, make one with like a darker main color and a lighter contrast color. Some of the testers are doing, like there's this like beautiful green and like cream one, like green as the um, main color and cream as the contrast and it is killing me it is so beautiful so if you're interested search the Farnham uh, sweater hashtag on Instagram and um, be on the lookout for for its release it's been a wonderful knit I have loved it so much <laughs> all right so that's finished object number one and what I'm wearing today um, finished object number two All right, has been taken care of. So, what are we? Second finished object is this pair of socks. This is my first pair of toe up socks with the flagel heel. I used a pattern, sort of. Um, it's called the Star Toad. Star Toad sock or Star Toe Up sock. Um, by, I think it's Pretty Pink Knits. I could be totally wrong there, but I will link it down below. Um, it's been, I really enjoyed it. I didn't do the star toe, I actually just did the Turkish cast on for the toe and then, um, kind of worked up. It's a little baggy for my foot. So I think instead of a 60 stitch, I might go down to like a 56, maybe. Um, but the flegal heel I really loved and enjoyed. And I actually knit this in, um, let me tell you about the yarn. It was lollipop yarn in the colorway Chaos Theory. And I still have a good amount left. Um, I don't like super tall socks. These are tall-er to 
kind of go to like an inch or two above my ankle. Um, but I still have quite a lot left of this. I can make like kid socks or something out of it. So it's lollipop yarn and the colorway is chaos theory. And um, it came in a really cute like gum or uh, gobstopper ball, but it's obviously we're getting to the bottom. So I might reroll this or cake it up into two separate so I can uh, try two at a time on like kid socks. But um, yeah, I really did enjoy the toe up experience. It's the first time I've actually knit a yarn or knit a pair of toes, words, knit a pair of socks so quickly. Normally socks take me quite a while because I just kind of get stuck. But um, this was really nice because I didn't have to like, I could try it on as I went and I didn't have to worry about like trying to fit it over my heel. I could try that on too. It was really a wonderful and nice experience. I've been wearing these a lot and the yarn has held up beautifully. It looks like it might be starting to felt just a hair on the heel, but that's actually okay by me um, because that makes it stronger but there's no wear apart from that so yeah these are wonderful really enjoyed them my next finished object isn't here it's actually at my office because I wear it in my office um, so I will have to remember to bring it next time but it is the bibliophile by Alicia Plummer 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 um, bibliophile sweater from Alicia Plummer and I used a an acrylic yarn that I had in stash that I got gifted for my birthday which is like a green tweed um, I will explain more about that on another podcast but it is also a finished object and it worked up very very quickly mostly because I had to play with gauge I wanted to use this yarn specifically but it was not the the pattern is a fingering weight yarn and this was more like a worsted so I knit like a much smaller size than normal and I really didn't want a lot of ease and so I went for zero ease um I think I got probably two centimeters of positive ease but um yeah it was it fits wonderfully I really enjoy it but I will show it next time and then my last finished object that I have is something that I just got off of needles yesterday and it's so cute I love it so this is the dancing T-Rex sweater from, I think her name is Natalie V on Ravelry. And I love this so much. Henry's already worn it. He wore it to church today. And um, it's just wonderful. It has been, it was such a fun little knit. And I knit it in, um, sorry guys, kids are nap striking. Um, I knit it in, Morris Studio Anti Curling DK in this gray color. Let's see, does it have? It's called Slate. Um, so there's that. And then um, the green I used was Valley Superwash DK in the color Forest. Um, so that was the green and I used one whole ball of this and I had to crack into the second ball for the last like four rows, basically the ribbing on the sleeve. So this is how much I have like a whole ball basically left of this green and um, quite a bit left of this gray. It took about one and a third, one and a half skeins of the gray. So I have enough for another sweater, like another color sweater for him if I wanted to do a gray or maybe for harmony or a hat and gloves or anything really. I've got quite a bit here um, because each skein has 273 yards, 250 meters. So it's a pretty classic DK 100 gram skein um, and they're itty bitty. So I knit the size three, four, um, and then I knit it a little longer than the three, four called for and arms a little longer just because he is kind of tall and I want it to fit him for quite a while. So it fits him like really well right now. And I think it will fit him for hopefully a year, maybe more because it stretches and it's acrylic. So in Merino, um, 
super wash me so it should it should um, stretch over time with wear so but I just love it you guys these dinosaurs they're so cute and he's already gotten a donut on it so I'm really glad I did acrylic and with something washable for him um, I can do more wooly things for my daughter because she's not as messy but with him he's a wild card so gotta do something good like that for him and that is it for my finished objects really all I've been working on so I'm kind of in a space right now where I don't I have a ton that of whips but um, nothing I'm really working on so let's move on to whips and I'll show you guys what I've got <laughs> my weak great drink of my coke though All right, so first things first, I will show you guys my church knitting. Where is it? It's in the same bag. And I am just making, this was my first go round. It was gonna be for Harmony. And technically I think it would have fit me, but then I started to do it weird. But let's see, would it fit me? <laughs> wow, no, it would not, but um, that was my attempt at a uh, fingerless mitt. I actually think the body was fine. It's just I bound off way too tight. It did fit harmony though. Um, but then I was like, you know what? I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably rip this out and start a new one. So I have a new one. This is just like what I do in church. So this is the beginnings of a penny glove, not the tea knit, and um, this is a uh, cashmere yarn. It's so soft. I don't remember what it's called anymore, and I don't think I have the ball there for it. Yeah. It's the same brand as this. So it's Cashmere Passion Plymouth Yarns. Excuse me, Plymouth with Fun. Cashmere Passion. This is a, I got this secondhand about a year ago. I got two balls and I think that I'm gonna do fingerless gloves and who knows, maybe more fingerless gloves, I don't know. But, um, and the, what is it? 80% Merino, 20% Cashmere. It's very soft, I enjoy it a lot. Um, so that's whip number one, just my church knitting, something easy that I can do while I'm at church and I think about it no other time during the day, week, just church. So it's growing very slowly. It's also totally unnecessary because we live in Mississippi and it, um, is not, it was cold and it might be cold a little bit longer, but it's not going to be cold for much longer and so by the time I finish these it's going to be completely unseasonal and I'll just go sit in a space somewhere and wait till next year when they can be warm but that's okay all right I'm gonna put my hair up because it is hot in here um so next okay so this was my um, I just my garter search blanket, but I don't like it, so I gave up on it. I'll probably rip it out. I just don't particularly like it, and um, I wasn't interested in really working on it, so that says something, right? Um, so this is all being well now it's being crocheted, but it was being knit in John Saffran. And I have a full bag of like just a bunch of different colors in here. It's gonna be kind of rainbowy for my, one of my best friends. She's having a daughter in March. And so it does need to be finished soon enough. But um, I decided just to do a granny stripe blanket. So we just, I'm half a stain into the pink. And that's the plan. Just a quick little granny stripe blanket. It's something quick and easy. I'm holding it double 
Um, and I'm gonna not ombre, but probably just stripe it up and have some fun with the color play on this. So, um, yeah. I'm just looking at all my other drops I've It's soft and it's gonna be great for the baby, especially in the summer. Um, and a nice early piece. So it will be fine. Actually, I guess it's not granny. Is this a green stripe blanket? I think it is. It's like a combination of the granny stripe and the moss stitch. So, yeah. Anyway, that's that. Um, I have not really worked on it. I just kind of had the idea of, of changing it up and said okay, and then started. We'll see where it goes. I might change it yet again. I don't have a lot of blanket mojo at the moment, and I have a lot of blankets that need to be done. So, I don't know what that says about me, but yeah. All right, the next is also a blanket, and this one is something that I just like, just need to get done. This is my um, Burnett confetti blanket, and it looks big, but it's actually not that big yet. Um, so this is it, and I really do like it. It's a cable stitch, crochet blanket. Um, it would be a good lap blanket at the moment if I put it like on the ground, or it's touching the ground right now, and it goes up to like my waist, sitting underneath it. So it would be a good lap blanket, but I have, I'm looking at the yarn right here. Um, one, two, three, looks like three more giant balls of this brown here, and like three or four more of the the blue. So my goal is to finish it soon-ish and just get this out of my life. It's a lot of yarn just sitting around in a tote because it doesn't fit anywhere else. I don't know where it's going. I don't know if it, I mean, it'll probably just stay here. It is a nice blanket. It's nice and soft. I enjoy it. It will keep us warm. And uh, at the moment, it's wide enough to like be a good bed blanket, like to lay on the bed. It's not really my color scheme, but that's okay. So um, that's that. Maybe I'll give it away. I had a lot of mojo to work on it last summer in Washington, and I have none now. So, yeah. But that's it. That's all I've got, guys. That's all that I'm working on. I um, don't have a sweater on the needles right now, which feels really weird to me. Um, I signed up for another test knit that I got accepted for, and it was supposed to start, like we were supposed to have the pattern like last Sunday, but we have not received it yet, which is totally fine. Um, but I'm just kind of waiting on that to um, come up and I can't, I've started trying to swatch for it. We have um, like instructions for a good swatch, but I haven't found the right yarn for it yet. So I don't know what to do with that. And um, I was gonna use this yarn here, but it is, so it's um, spoon fibers and it's 50% silk, 50% merino. Um, at 140 yards and I think I would have enough and it mat it like hit but it's a little scratchy which is weird because it has silk but it's because of the sequins I think and I just didn't love the way that it was working up in that particular pattern so I might still go with this but I might not um and then I was thinking what else was I thinking something with this white mohair. I can't remember what it was, but there was something there. I have this 
throw in felted tweed that I could do, but I don't know if I have enough meterage for it. I mean, I've got plenty of stuff I could do, but it's like finding the right thing. Oh, this, this is the other thing that I really was thinking would be fun because it's a fun little sweater. Um, this is authentic hand-dyed alpaca in the color Violet Night. Not Violet, Violet, Violet Night. And I have about, I think there's three skeins here and one skein here, so it's four skeins, but I realized I wouldn't have enough meterage Mm -mm. Um, and so there's no way to like get more of this yarn and so uh, yeah there's that um, but yeah anyway that's all that um, let's move on to acquisitions these are acquisitions. I didn't realize. Okay, so I guess first and foremost, I have this yarn, which is so fun. It is Taki Yarns Kaleidoscope, and it is in the color 2433. It is 86% superwash wool, 14% acrylic. 218 yards per ball and I have two of these and I don't know what I want to make with it but I just like could not pass this beautiful yarn up. I couldn't do it. So I don't know. Maybe I'll make a cowl or um, two yarns of DK weight ish. I think it's more like worsted. Yeah, um, might do like a small shawl. I could do something, but it's so beautiful. I just could not pass it up. It might have to wait till next fall where I, when I want like a hat or something, but it's just so pretty. I couldn't, I could not resist. So I got two of these. Um, oh, that's what, oh. I remember something fell earlier and I was like, what was that? And I was like, I didn't see it. I can't see it, but now I know what it was. One minute. All right, I found it. I bought a Zauber ball by Schopel. Schopel. This is in the, it's 150 grams. It is such a fun color. Here's like what the color will work up to be. There we go. And let's see. It is all in German. So it's a 75% superwash and 25% polyamide. Um, so that's fantastic. And it's, um, I, I think it's 400 meters per ball. Um, so I'm thinking I'm just gonna do socks with these. They would be make a very fun, like Easter-y kind of sock. Um, very excited about this. I've been hearing a lot about them and it's very fun. I like that it mimics like the hand spun look of um spin cycle or other hand spun and um it's beautiful. I'm very excited about it. So that might be the next pair of socks that I cast on but as you will see I have a lot of socks. I'm kind of in a sock knitting mood so a lot of socks that I'm about to cast on. Um, next, I am a subscriber to the Arcane Fiberworks Sock Club, and so I got, and I, I choose two, the two one, because I want the warm and I want the cool. Um, 
so this is the warm color and it is called totally tulips and it is absolutely beautiful i love it so much um it's a january sock club warm it's 80 20 merino nylon and i wanted to cast this on in january but i did not get a chance this would also be a wonderful spring knit definitely reminds me of tulips it is so beautiful so there's that and then um there's the cool which is beauty on the beach which i absolutely love as well and honestly i don't know if i want to make socks out of this or make something else but it is so pretty tyler from arcane fiber works does an amazing job with his dyeing um and these are relatively inexpensive, I feel, for an Im incredible hand-dyed skein mini sock set. Um, I think for two, I pay $50. So it's $25 a skein, but I get the mini set so skein as well, and it's a sock club, so I really enjoy that. So this is also potentially a pair of socks, maybe not. It's so beautiful. I just... I'm really in love with the purple right now. I kind of want to wear this. I don't know. I don't want to wear it on my feet. I want to X my face. Should this be a muscle burrow? What do I do with this penny? I don't know. <laughs> All right. I made a pretty large order with Arcane Fiberworks because I love his coloring. So I will show you what I've got for sweater quantities. But so the first one, I have four here, but I two up there and I just wanted to this is called back to my roots it's in DK everything I ordered is in DK and this is so beautiful and um very fall to me um like neutral without being neutral I, I'm excited to see this work up so excited <sighs> yes and um I also ordered Ooh, it's beautiful. Um, this is called Rustling Leaves. So obviously another fall tone, but look at that. There's like a little bit of blue in there, some purple, some brown, like an ochre color. Obviously some like pinky purple. It's just so, so beautiful. Some gray. Um, the sample for this knitted up was absolutely gorgeous. Like this speckling right here. This is what I also have I, for another thing. And honestly, this might be a good, maybe this will be a contender for what I need for that sweater. Maybe. And they were so wonderful. I did not expect this at all, but they sent me a little gift, which was so sweet. And this is Joe the Buffalo in a DK weight. and. So this was a gift, um, a little thank you for ordering with them. And this is so, so beautiful. Um, I'm kind of, I know it's, um, it is an 80-20 merino nylon and DK weight. So I could make a fun pair of like DK weight socks with this. And I think that would be so fun. These are just so beautiful. So this might also be something I work up fairly soon. <laughs> Um, all right, I ordered, um, three more pairs of, like, sock knitty, socks, sock knitting things, so they're all Baroque of Comfort Sock, which is 50% super fine nylon and super fine acrylic, um, these are good for gifts for me, because I don't know, some of the people I knit for, I know are not going to take very good care of their knits and are just going to tuck them in the wash, and while I can do super wash, um, I just know that this is going to hold up a little better, so this is one that I bought for a person in mind, um, and it is the color 1817, but it's pretty, and I really like it, so there's a certain person in my head that I think I want to, I'm actually thinking I'm going to hold this double and do, um, like a DK weighted socks for them in like a mauve color though. 
there's that. I actually think I'm probably going to do all these and hell double. But maybe not, because I do like this one knitted up. So there's this one, same thing. Um, it's really pretty. I really enjoy it. And then this one. So these are all for other people, um, socks that I have ideas for, but um, so there's no like rush in making these, but you know, birthdays, things like that. I have, I have ideas for what I wanna do. And the last thing, I don't think I sent or showed you guys last time, but maybe I did, but it's definitely a top contender for something I wanna um, cast on soon. So I'm gonna show you guys again if I haven't already. And that's hand dyed yarn from Wildwood Fibers in the color Defiance. I have four skeins of this, I think. Yeah, four skeins of this. And it is, that's their logo. Um, but it is so beautiful. I'm loving it. And it's just so chocolatey and rich. Um, it's got so much delicious color, tonal goodness. So this might be a contender for what I, um, do next as well. I don't know. There's a lot. Obviously, yarn is fun. So, I do have some more things coming. Um, Dying Wishes Yarn Co. was having a moving sale, and so I indulged in, a, I think, two sock or sweater quantities of that, and some sock sets that they were selling, um, some one-of-a-kind sock sets and things of that nature. So we'll see when that shows up. I will probably show it next time. And we'll see what I have on the needles. Will I have another Farnham sweater? Will I have that other test knit? Will this giant thing be done? Um, will I have another pair of socks on the go? Will I have another kid sweater? Will I have just a regular sweater for me? Who knows? But, um, yeah, until next time, you guys, have you guys enjoy your craft, whatever that is for you, and um, have a lovely week. Talk to you soon.